No. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member, thank you for holding this hearing, uh, holding hearings on nominations as part of the uh, responsibilities we have, so we appreciate you doing it. Congratulations to all the nominees. Uh, Mr. Mora, what would you consider the biggest challenge we have in the Western Hemisphere today? Democratic erosion, democratic backsliding, uh, the lack of trust among citizens of the Americas, of their governments and of their institutions. That has a ripple effect, has second and third order effects on issues related to migration, uh, security, and so on and so forth. And I think the OAS, uh, uh, Chairman Menendez, is in a unique position uh, because of its core competencies to continue highlighting and underscoring this particular challenge and to find mechanisms that exist uh, to address this issue in a collective manner. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, probably uh, more so than ever before. We have three now dictatorships in the Western mm -hmm. Hemisphere where we only had one in Cuba, uh, Venezuela. Uh, we talk about the migration of Ukrainians. There are five million Venezuelans that have fleed Maduro and Venezuela. Uh, of course, we have the longstanding dictatorship of Cuba uh, where we see a new uh, uh, group of Cubans fleeing the island through Nicaragua uh, into attempting to come to the United States. And of course, uh, the newest uh, fermented uh, dictatorship in Nicaragua with Ortega. Uh, and that's without talking about other backsliding in other parts of the hemisphere. So your work at the OAS is going to be very important. Uh, Ambassador Bagley, in that regard, I want to uh, visit uh, some of the comments that you have made in the past, because you're going to a country uh, where democratic backsliding is a real concern as well in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, where we are concerned about its present leader uh, trying to uh, undermine the essence of the election process that is taking place. And it's one of those countries, along with Mexico, who are suggesting that we must insist on having dictatorships in the Western Hemisphere come to the summit of the Americas, uh, which I thought was a summit of democracies. I thought our alignment uh, was an alignment of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Uh, so, uh, so Brazil's an important place in this regard. Uh, in 1998, uh, you made a series of, of uh, remarks. Uh, you said there was, quote, no reason for Democrats to think that they could get the Cuban vote, but they still thought they could get money from them, and they did. It was also New Jersey where they now say that the 55 Cuban population there is even more radical against Castro than the ones in Miami. The real hardliners are in Newark, New Jersey, which has the second largest Cuban population in the United States. Again, it's not numbers, it's like the Jewish factor, it's money. So I guess I'm one of those hardliners radicals who live in New Jersey, although you're wrong about Newark, it happens to be Union City in West New York, but uh, explain to me what you meant by that. Is it a suggestion that one group of Americans don't have the right to engage in the political process as others do? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate the opportunity to clarify that as I did with, um, um, with the question about the Jewish, um, it was the same interview. Uh, it was, again, a poor choice of words. I'm very sorry that we ever had the interview. It didn't really make sense to do. It was an oral history. But it certainly does not reflect my views on Jewish Americans or Cuban Americans or anyone else. I absolutely strongly support the right of Jewish Americans, Cuban Americans, Irish Americans, all Americans to be part of the political process, to be politically active, to raise money, give money uh, to those that uh, they support, um, as I have done myself. So it was, um, again, a poor choice of words. And I did say, they say, because I had heard this from someone in New Jersey. That was the only thing. I did not you know, have a you know, particular President view. President Trump is famous for saying, they say. <laughs> yeah, I don't right, know who the they are, me. Uh, but they say. I know. Uh, and mean. so words, especially for those who are going to be ambassadors of the United States to uh, other countries, are incredibly important, uh, probably more significant than maybe in our individual daily lives, although I think they're always important. I don't know if Senator Cardin raised this, but 
You also said the Democrats always tend to go with the Jewish constituency on Israel and say stupid things. Uh, I'm a firm uh, supporter of the state of Israel. I think it's an incredibly important relationship we have, the one democracy in a sea of autocracy, uh, a major security ally of the United States, a significant trading partner of the United States. Uh, do you believe that uh, when Democrats uh, talk to Jewish constituency, they are saying stupid things? Not at all, Senator. Uh, again, it was a poor choice of words, but it, it does not reflect any of my thinking. Um, what I said, and the, it was really referring to uh, the discussion on whether Jerusalem should be you know, the capital of, of Israel, and that is something I worked on the, um, a number of, of uh, initiatives, and one was the Camp David Accords, we negotiated for Palestinian autonomy, and one of the kind of the holy grail was Jerusalem, and the idea was that the concept, which has gone through all administrations until um, President Trump's administration, that we keep uh, Jerusalem as part of the overall negotiations over the two-state solution. So that's that. It was, a, as I say, it was a stupid thing to say. Mm. It was, um, and I regret those comments, and they don't, absolutely don't reflect my thinking on any of these uh, issues, yeah. or on uh, Jewish Americans or Cuban Americans. I've worked with both uh, politically. I've worked with from the NDI. I've been on the board for over 30 years. We have done democracy and human rights and trainings in well, Cuba. Just as you, so. just as you had a, at one period of time the right, uh, and, and as any citizen had, to lobby uh, to change our policy towards Cuba, Cuban Americans have the right to lobby and uh, exercise their view of what our policy should be as well. Absolutely. I have some other questions, but I, I, I want to let Senator share. Absolutely. Thank you, Senator. I, I totally agree with that. Thank you.